So we're in March 2022. In this episode, let's have a look at what China plans next for the exploration of Mars, including confirmed missions as well as projects that are just at the state of an early stage concept. I'm Jean Deville, the Dongfang Hour. Let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. So before talking about the future, a quick recap about the present. 2020 and 2021 were very hot years for Mars exploration. We had the UAE, we had NASA, we had China, all succeed in launching separate spacecraft in the summer of 2020, with the latter two also landing rovers on Mars, Perseverance and Zhurong, as you probably already know. And so on the Chinese side, this was the Tianwen-1 mission, and this is China's first independent attempt at Mars exploration. And so far, it has definitely been rather successful, with the Zhurong rover having driven well over 1,200 meters on the Martian surface as of early 2022. Now, I'm not getting into too much detail on this, as this episode is more about future missions. And so basically, as things were starting to look pretty good for the Tianwen-1 mission in the summer months of 2021, the Chinese space agency CNSA then validated in September 2021 China's next Mars mission, which would be a sample return mission. And the mission is somewhat like the lunar sample return mission, the Chang'e 5, which was launched on the Long March 5 in late 2020. But the Mars sample return mission would have the added complexity of having to take place over two launches due to just the smaller payload that you're able to take when going to Mars compared to when you're going to the moon. And at a very high level, how this would work is that you'd have uh, the lander and the ascent vehicle that would launch on a first rocket and the orbiter and the reentry capsule that would be launched on the other. The lander would be captured by the red planet's gravitational force and land on Mars, while the orbiter would, as its name tends to suggest, would remain in a Martian orbit. The lander would then collect the samples. It would transfer it to the ascent vehicle, which would then lift off and rendezvous with the orbiter. The orbiter in turn would engage in a Mars-Earth return transfer trajectory and then return the samples to Earth using the reentry capsule. And this should happen around the late 2020s, likely starting around the 2028 Mars launch window. And possibly this could be in parallel of the NASA ESA Mars sample return mission, which would be quite interesting because that would add a tad of competition to both these missions. And so all of this is very cool stuff, but that's it. That's about the extent of confirmed Mars missions that we know of in China. Now let's get into China's post-2030 Mars plans, which is going to be much more speculative, although everything I'm going to say here is at the very least based on some statement or speech from Chinese officials or space institutes. But again, generally, they're more concepts rather than confirmed missions. One important glimpse at future Chinese Mars plans was during the GLEX 2021 event during which the director of CALT, Wang Xiaojun, presented a three-step roadmap to establish a Mars base. And so step one is basically what China is doing now. It's mastering uncrewed robotic exploration of Mars, managing long distance telemetry, relay satellites, rovers, selecting an ideal site for a base, and developing ISRU technology, in-situ resources utilization. What this is, is the ability to live off the land, to produce energy and propellant and oxygen and water, all of these important components with just local resources. Basically, step one is the current Tianwen-1 mission and the future sample return mission, more or less, that I'll temporarily call Tianwen-2. And this would be using relatively mature or soon to be mature technology. Typically for launch, for example, it would be using the existing Long March 5 rockets, as well as potentially the next generation rocket, the heavier Long March 5 DY that we mentioned in a past episode and which should perform a maiden launch in 2026. So that's step one. Step two would be initial human exploration. And this is where it gets really interesting because this would enable humans to orbit and to um, land on Mars. And this is a massively more complex step. And typically to make this trip more sustainable, more comfortable for the Taikonauts to be able to launch enough cargo to Mars, to enable Taikonauts to have a 500 day stay on Mars, which is the standard duration when you're staying on Mars. This is due to the constraints of Mars launch windows. All of this would require China to develop new technologies. And some of these include 
in-orbit assembly technology. This is to assemble um, a large Earth-Mars spacecraft in orbit rather than assembling it on Earth, where launching it would be very difficult anyway. And the main reason for building such a large spacecraft is to enable the Taikonauts to spend the half-year trip to Mars in more than just a cramped capsule. Also, this huge Earth-Mars cruiser spacecraft would need to be refueled in orbit, similar to Starship. And this is another technology that China has to develop, although they've started developing a sort of prototype that was shown at the Zhuhai Air Show last year. Admittedly, this was more to um, refuel satellites rather than space exploration spacecraft. China would also need to develop more efficient propulsion technologies, such as nuclear thermal propulsion or nuclear electrical propulsion, rather than the traditional chemical propulsion that's used today. And another key spacecraft that China would have to develop is a sort of a Mars shuttle vehicle that would take the Taikonauts from this big Earth-Mars cruiser in Martian orbit to the Martian surface and back. And recently, we actually saw a video of CALT released earlier this year describing such a concept vehicle. And this space plane would have apparently variable sweep lifting surfaces, meaning that the wing's geometry would change depending on the various flight regimes. And this spacecraft was named the Mars Express or the Yinghuo Biaochu, and it would be reusable, performing vertical takeoff, vertical landing, and it would use ISRU, in situ resources utilization, to get its propellants directly from Mars. And finally, as cargo to Mars would be shipped separately from Earth, a separate Mars cargo spacecraft would also need to be developed by China. So overall, this step two is a very ambitious plan, and a lot of stuff needs to be done first before any of this is possible. And this is notably because a lot of the technologies I've just mentioned, like nuclear propulsion, ISRU, or in-orbit assembly, is still at a relatively low technology readiness level. And, and you know, the chief engineer of the China Mars mission, Sun Zhou, happily admitted this. He estimated in 2021 that Chinese crewed spaceflight to Mars was, at the very least, a good 20 years away. So the 2040s at the earliest. And finally, perhaps most interesting of all, Wang Xiaojun talks about a step three, and this is where things definitely get a little bit crazy. Basically, it would be to routinely send Taikonauts to Mars, and to do something like that, something called an Earth-Mars cycler orbit would need to be used. And what this is, an Earth-Mars cycler orbit, is, is basically a trajectory that encounters the Earth and Mars on a regular basis. The main idea would be to put a very large Earth-Mars ferry in such an orbit, so the Taikonauts planning to go to Mars would just have to cruise to this massive ferry spacecraft as it reaches the vicinity of the Earth, and these Taikonauts could do it with, you know, a small crewed spacecraft. They would dock to this much larger spacecraft, and then they could spend the rest of their five months trip to Mars in more comfortable conditions. So again, these remain nothing more than early stage designs, but it does give an idea to space enthusiasts like you and I, um, you know, what an amazing time it is to watch space history being made. And so that's it for this episode on future Chinese Mars exploration for now. Do check out our other video that we published recently that discusses the Long March 5 DY rocket in detail. And apart from that, I'm Jean Deville of the Dongfang Hour. A special thanks to all our patrons who went to buymeacoffee.com slash Dongfang Hour to support this channel. And I just want to say thank you very much, and I will see you in next week's episode.